Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I've I just picked up this jack. It's in the scrapyard, and all I can tell you is it's really heavy and it doesn't work. Jack says it's an Ajax. I think that's yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the brand Roadrunner uses. Or is that Acme? I don't know. But over here. Ajax model 95632 range three and three quarters to 20 inches ish I can't read it so it's kind of rusted up nothing's moving I guess this thing was sitting out in the rain for a while Back casters move. Well, I gotta refill my spray bottle. All right, I'm gonna let that sit in. So these rollers are all seized up. I think we're going to need a pipe wrench. I feel like they should move. They might be cast iron, I don't want to break them. So I got this from the scrapyard too. About two months ago. I don't know if I made a video on it. Still pretty tight. This one's going. Looks like there's a, a spot on here where I can spray in some lube. Yeah. A 
opening. It looks like a greaser, but it's just a hole. Alright. Yeah, this should move. I can barely turn it by hand. I think we'll let that sit in. I'll probably wheel it around and it'll break in a little bit. This thing's seized in place too. I don't know if it's, no, oh, there we go. I was gonna say, I didn't know if it was stuck at the top or the bottom. Looks like it was stuck right here. All right. I found uh, something else here. Gonna zoom you guys in right there. Watch this. So I'm turning the handle on the jack, and this pin, which is going through there, must be sheared off because it's not turning anything. So we're gonna start by trying to get that pin out. That might be the only problem with this jack. Well, I'm going to try these uh, nippers. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think that would pull that out. I think we should pull out the other side. And then... Yeah, you can see that we're missing this center section. So there's definitely a broken piece in here. There we go. This is an old concrete bit, but it's eighth inch. So I'm going to put a pin in here and see if this jack works. Found a little bolt that is uh, fitting in here it looks like. Let's see if now that thing's turning. Well I'm going to start by trying to jack it up. Nothing. Not sure what that is. So Definitely not going up. So I would think it would go down. There we go. Well, we're halfway there, it goes down. Now we gotta get that thing to go up. So before I disassemble it, I'm gonna try and just work it manually and see if I can get any fluid moving.
Maybe when that bottle jack goes down, it'll suck in air, start working. I don't know. All right, guys. So I'm back at it. I took a little break here. And I don't see any spot to fill this thing up. But I do see this plastic thing here. So I'm going to try and remove this. Hopefully it doesn't break. And I'm going to try and put some oil in there. I'm just going to look down in there and see what that looks like. Looks a bit rusty in there. Kind of corroded. This is what I'm putting in. A little ATF. One thing, it does look pretty dry in there. Looks like this should be up. I'm loosening up that. Maybe that opens the valve. I don't know. Alright guys, I'm back to working on the vise here. So, I ended up disassembling it and just cleaning it. This goes on here like this. This uh, cap nut was super tight. You can see I had a pipe wrench on there with like a four foot pole and I couldn't get it to budge. So I wound up welding a plate of steel onto an old socket and I used my, uh, the Milwaukee Fuel half inch high impact thing popped right off. It's pretty amazing. So at this point, I got in here and this thing was missing like all the seals and stuff. So I did some research and uh, found this place, HCRC Now, and I uh, got some parts for this and we're going to try and put it back together. I cleaned everything out with brake parts cleaner, washed and scrubbed everything, so I think uh, we should be good. So first thing that we need to do is we need to get our seals that drop in here. And, um, they sent me out this seal kit. So uh, what we want to do is put this back together. So there's going to be one seal up top and then this is the backer. It's down below. So I was trying to interpret the drawing, and there's different models of this jack, but the quad ring is going to go in first, and on top of that is going to be the backup ring. So I wasn't sure how to get these rings out of here. I was well. I was trying to determine if this thing would come apart. It has a groove in there. It does not come apart. I talked to. Uh, this place, I guess it's called Lazar's on the phone, and they let me know that it does not come apart. I had to send them a picture, because I had a tough time trying to explain what was going on, and I have a feeling this jack's a little older than most of the ones that they deal with. They said I'd be able to fit these right in here. So, we're going to work on that. Jeez. If there's a trick to uh, putting these in here, I don't know what it is.
Got it in there, but it's wrinkled a little, so. Might be easier to put that quad ring in second. Get this one in first. There we go. Still is a little wrinkly, but I think it'll settle down once it gets uh, seated. Now I ran a hone uh, just like you would with a cylinder on a small engine. I ran this through here because I, I damaged this a little bit trying to free up these rings. And I ended up using oxyacetylene torch to melt the old ones out of there. I don't even know if they were leaking. I should have just left them in there probably. Alright, so now we're going over to the RAM. So as far as the RAM goes, there's a washer. And then there's this white thing. And then there's a seal that goes on the bottom. This was completely missing on my jack. So this was really the main problem. So I'm going to oil that up a little bit. We'll put that on. And then I went through and cleaned all the parts. I don't think I'm going to get into all the ball bearings and springs. you got to drill out stuff and... The guy I talked to on the phone said that generally that doesn't have to be done. And I don't really feel like doing it. So there you go. That's how that ram goes together. And this should slip up in here. That'll get pushed through there. Yeah, should be good. I'm going to oil that up. So I think we're about ready to put this thing back together. So you want to make sure the screen's on here. Fits in this hole, just stands up, some sort of filter. And these are ready to go, both those seals. And then this bullet looking thing goes on the outside. It's just a tight seal down in the bottom. No, no rubber in there or o-ring or anything. That fits on there just like that, and then when that cap nut, this threads on to the inner pipe, and that's that's what holds it down. So we're gonna go through, we'll thread this on, and then I'm not gonna be able to use this to tighten it up. I almost need something U-shaped. I was able to use that to pull off because the ram pulled right out of this thing. So I'm going to use a pipe wrench to tighten it, because that's kind of what I have. And that's a little different than loosening it. Loosening it, you're going to need something a lot tighter than a pipe wrench. Well, I think that that's going to be fine, I hope. Go one more time. the next person battle that thing off hopefully it's not me the next thing we need is this uh, pump mechanism which uh, I used an impact to get off it was on there very tight and they give you seals that you can replace in there but I went through and cleaned everything and the seals look good to me and uh, if there's a problem, it's not too hard to get to that to fix it, I guess. So, there we go. You'll have to push that down like that when you go to take it off. Otherwise, your socket won't fit on. So, I'm going to find a socket for that. Actually, it's not a three-quarter. It's a one-inch socket. So 
So I'm gonna torque this. And now we're on to this uh, spring assembly. So I'll lay out exactly how this thing goes. There's a, a bottom spacer, a spring, a top spacer, which is a little bit longer, a cap, and then you finish it off with uh, this C, C clamp thing. So what we're going to have to do is get this on here and basically compress this so that we can get that ring on. So I managed to get a C clamp to get that thing on there and I still have to tighten up this like copper washer. But I tried this several times. I think I have it started. I really hope so because that was tough. I'm just gonna try and hammer it on and tighten up that ring. I think the ring is actually like copper, it's very soft. Got that on there, but I'll tell you what, that was tough. They must be using some tools that I don't have. All right. Next part of this is there's an o-ring and then like a leather gasket and that's the order that these go on and looks like they gave us both of these so switch them out and this actually threads on here. And you can use a half inch drive and just drive it in. And then this gets screwed down to seal it. So I think what you do is attach this plate. That's what seals up that rubber o-ring and just like a leather gasket. I think in the new kit they give you a copper gasket, but maybe it's a cork gasket that was on there. But the old cork gasket looked thicker and a little better than that copper one. Since it was a different material, I just decided to leave it. So we went with uh, the cork and a new rubber o-ring. So there's a little fill port on this one. Most of these jacks have like a cap back here on the hydraulic cylinder. So I don't even know if any oil is going to go in this because I have the ram down. Doesn't look like anything's going in. So 
So this way is loosened. There we go. Now that's seated. So with the jack loosened, let's see if that takes any oil. Doesn't seem to be. I'm going to try and jack this thing up. Try and keep adding oil till something happens, maybe. Well guys, it's been a bit of a while since I worked on this jack and it's taken a lot out of me because I've been trying to figure out why it's not working. And um, I contacted uh, Lazar's um, jack company, they're out of California, and I talked to them and I was on the phone with them and they were real helpful and it turned out when we were going through the plans looking at this thing as soon as I looked here I noticed that this part 19 was missing that little needle there and because of that the jack was not pressurizing so they were able to get me this part they shipped it out real quick and that's where I got the other gaskets to rebuild the jack but before I got it I put in the uh, universal joint this thing I screwed that in and I cut like a rubber glove and kind of bunched it up into a ball, stuck it in there and pumped up the jack and jack worked. So I know that this is going to work. So now all I have to do is install it. So here's what we need to do. We're going to drop this needle in there and it's a lot like a carburetor needle and seat type system. So that dropped in and this is our release, this goes like that and then there's like a leather gasket up here and then an o-ring which I replaced that goes there and we should be able to turn this in. And I'm going to need a half inch wrench for this top. I guess that's it. two screws that hold this collar on. Okay, so that plate looks like it's seated, and now it's just a matter of putting the jack back together. So this should slip in here somehow. Looks like I'm going to need a hammer.
just going to try and open this up a little if I can. I have these outside bolts loose. Now I just gotta tap that till it'll fit in the hole. There we go. I'm actually thinking I should test this out before I bolt it all together. See what we get. So if I turn to the right, that should close that needle. Okay, I'm going to put oil in this because I did have the oil actually squirted out. So, hopefully that's the issue. So we'll add a little bit of uh, ATF. Alright, I don't want to overfill it. So we'll see if that helps anything. So we're tightening up. Just trying to manually lift this a little bit. See if that does anything. Well, I get the feeling that that needle's not seating properly. So I was taking a look at this thing and I noticed these threads are slightly damaged a little bit and I think that this isn't threading all the way down so it's not seating this uh, needle that was in there on the bottom so I believe these are like a pipe thread so I cut a slit in this this is actually steel and I'm gonna try and like tap this thing down in here to kind of rework these threads because I don't have this tap size so by cutting that little slit I should be able to work this down here at least I hope I can because if I can't I'm pretty much out of luck with this thing so it's Getting pretty tight there, so I'm going to back it up a turn and then go forward. But I think it should go much further down than what we're getting. So I'm just going to slowly work this thing, turn or two at a time. So, once it bottoms out, I'll know it. Right now, it just feels like it's getting stuck. There's pretty good pressure on it.
And I'm going to take a greasy Q-tip to try and remove any of these tapping particles. It's definitely going down lower this time. So I think if I'm just patient and take my time, I'll be able to correct these threads. All right, that's the bottom, folks. A little bit of debris in there. Now the O-ring fits up here with that plate that holds it down. Threads look good. They're not they're not damaged that bad, but it was definitely getting tight. So I'm going to put some grease on this Q-tip and clean that out. So any of these metal particles will end up causing problems. That's the best way to destroy a hydraulic system is just getting a little bit of metal in there. All right, um, I think what I want to do is try and blow that out a little bit if I can. I'm going to put a magnet in here. Get whatever we can. I did get something there. Alright, I'm gonna try a chop towel too. So, just taking a little piece of a shop towel. And I'm gonna put that in there. Try and get some of that grease out of there. That actually did all right. All right, that looks pretty good. Take two. So this is the needle. All right, that's seated. Now we'll put this thing on. If this doesn't work, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it working. So, hang on. The handle's not going in all the way. There we go. Oh, well, 
but it's not all the way tight. Hang on, now it's tight. Hallelujah. All right, so we got it working. I'm going to bolt this thing back together, guys. Uh, there's about four bolts i got to put in it, and then I'm going to try and jack up my truck. Wish me luck. So, guys, i got the jack working, and now what I want to do is use these little plugs. Now, what happens is they have these little plugs. I drill the hole in them, and then I put a screw through them to pop them out. They go up into these holes, and the kit that I got only gives you one plug, and I ended up taking both of these apart and going through them. So I took this plug, and I just welded it a little bit on both sides. So we're going to reuse that and uh, seal this thing up. So that goes in there, and then you just tap on it a little, it's, it's kind of convex. So when I was <clears throat> working on removing this saddle here and the spring and the universal joint, I ended up getting frustrated. I just cut this thing out of the way. It was bent like that, I think, so the handle can go down lower. So I'm going to leave this bent, but, I'm, but I am going to reattach it. So i got to start working on getting that back into where it was. Okay guys, I ground it down and I ended up realizing it got a little bit too thin so I cut a little bit of a, a plate of metal and welded that on there so now that's strong. I guess I could have ground it a little bit more over here but anyhow we got it all together, I painted the handle and it's time to test this thing out.
Okay guys, I got that metal back together in the front and I painted the handle and I put a little spray paint on it just to protect it. Doesn't match, but it's close enough for me. And uh, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. We're going to test this thing out. And the only other thing is I put a little rubber cap on here. I drilled a hole in that just so it has a vent. And I don't know, I just thought it looked a little better, that's all. So we're all set. We're going to try and lift my truck. I put a piece of plywood under here just so it doesn't sink down in my driveway. Well, it looks like it's working. Well, we're definitely off the ground. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's working well. I'm gonna let that hold a while. Well, it seems to be holding well. So let's see if it releases. Okay guys, well I finally got this thing done and it's working so I'm happy about that. It just took a long time. But you got to keep in mind I learned a lot of stuff in this project and it's, it's always hard to fix something when there's a missing piece that you don't know is missing. So you know th that really slowed me down on this one. And I had to do some homework. I got a little help from that Lazar place. Um, their online tech service was really good and just like this lift table there's a ram there and these uh, pallet forks I happen to have right now they work all the same so this thing here is a little spring-loaded pump that pumps air in there and the air goes in the cylinder and it pushes on the hydraulic fluid and it raises the ram and that's basically how they work they're fairly simple, and a lot of times your problems are the seals, or you're low on oil, or you might have some air in your system, which if you have air in the system, you just raise the, the jack all the way up and keep pumping it, and that'll push the air out. So anyhow, guys, I'm Double Wide 6. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have a jack like this, I know uh, Walker makes them, Ajax makes them, Snap-on. I believe they're all made by Walker and just rebranded in different brands. But uh, it looks like a really heavy duty strong jack. And this one we rescued from getting melted down and turned into something else. So uh, I'm happy we did the project. It just took some time. So thanks for following along. Let me know what you think in the comments. Take care.